Hi guys and welcome to another unboxing and review of a 3-axis brushless gimbal. This one is the Zion Z1 Tiny 2, so the second iteration of their Tiny gimbal. Um, it's designed for a hero camera uh, as always. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of an unboxing first. Obviously I'll take a look at what we've got and then I'll mount it to a multi-rotor and we'll take a look at the footage. Now anyone who's seen my video channel will know that I've had my hand on most of the Fairtech products. Um, I've most recently had my hands on the Fairtech Mini 3D um, and that didn't come out too well, certainly in my eyes at least, unfortunately. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be a um, uh, an alternative to the Fairtech product basically and Zion very kindly sent me this, their Evolution, which I've done a review of already, and their Rider 2 as well. Now, the fact that this is the Tiny 2 says something to you. This is a second iteration. The key with Zion is that they've been there in China selling and making these things for a while. They just don't seem to have as many distributors or resellers over in the West. So I think what they're trying to do with giving people like me samples of it is to try and kind of um, gain awareness over here for people so that they've got an option and hopefully they'll start getting into some of the retailers as well because if the Evolution handheld gimbal which I did a review of uh, before was anything to go by then this hopefully will be a very good little gimbal for the price point. So um, Anyway, let's crack open the box, let's take a look at what we get inside there, and then we will move on from there. So, very similar in the uh, design of the boxing for this, as it was the Evolution, which is a nice cardboard packaging, nothing particularly um, adventurous with it, but very nicely laid out and a nice solid bit of foam to stop it from rattling around. Uh, very simple in terms of what you get, you get a little box, and we get the gimbal itself, which I will gently remove here okay and let's throw that out of the way okay so as you can see it's a nice compact package um, the gimbal itself very similar in design to the uh, the motors and everything of the evolution um, and we've got a nice little control module on the top here, which will house all of the various bits and bobs that you need. We have got a JST connector for the power. There's a couple of input ports. So this has um, ground, five volt, mod, channel one, channel two, channel three, and then we've got the um, ground and AV. So that'll be the AV output. There's then a micro USB on the top here for updating firmware. So all very neat, um, very similar again in respect to the um, uh, the Evolution and also the Fairtech products actually in the way that they've done it is now completely wireless. There's no, um, there's no visible wires, all the wires are housed behind these nice kind of rubberized bits on the arm which is quite nice um, and obviously we've got this little bit of padding in there where the camera would be so I can loosen that off and we'll take that out yeah and construction wise very nice uh, all aluminium as as always as you kind of expect with these things uh, reasonable size if I compare this to uh, that's the uh, Zenmoose H3 2D actually but you get a, an indication of how big the motors are compared to that so this is quite a large gimbal um, I will do some weights and I shall uh, get some of that for you uh, later on but um, you can see that actually platform wise it's going to be somewhat more sizable than something like a Zenmoose however these motors if they're anything to go by by the evolution then they're going to be really solid um, and actually designed to carry weights beyond sort of the hero uh, four camera uh, things like the um, the, the SJ4000 cameras they they will all fit in here maybe a little bit of tweaking needed for them but these motors are designed to kind of carry that extra weight so um, the, these will be quite tough so let's just strike that out of the way what do we get in the box then let's just take a look Okay, so in the box we have some dampeners. We have more dampeners, so they give us a variety of uh, different weight of dampeners, which is always nice to see, especially with the Fairtech issues that we've had with anti-vibration. We have the hanger rails, two of those. We've got a micro USB cable. We've got the little USB to um, uh, mini sort of Pico blade connector. So what that will do is that will actually connect into the GoPro camera and that will take the video 
feed from that and it will send it to this here I would imagine uh, where is it yeah it'll be on the cradle there there we go at the bottom of the motor so that will go there and that sends video from the GoPro through the arms and all the way up to the control box here where the output can then be sent on to uh, to your video transmitter for uh, for your flight which is very nice um, this one has got four wires one two three four which means this will also power the GoPro camera as well. I will confirm that, but usually ones with three do just video, um, and ones with four tend to do the power as well. So um, that'd be nice if it does do it. Uh, we've also got a series of little screws and an Allen key in this little bag here. We've got a complete wiring harness, which I'll take apart and we'll just make sure it is. I would imagine there's kind of two parts to it, so we'll just unwind that. And sure enough, we've got a little pico blade black and yellow cable there we've got ourselves a little JST connector so that's all pre-wired so you can then basically send that off to a, um, a 12 volt source I believe this can take up to uh, 6s battery um, again I will double check and confirm that once I've had a look at all the instructions and everything like that um, but that's so that's uh, supplied there as well and then we have the main block here which is how we're going to be controlling the various modes and um, that plugs into the control board on here just in that slot there. so that will be the main sort of remote control RC control there a little bit tight it has to be said there we go clips in there and then yeah this little video send feed here which is just very simple ground and AV it says ground and AV but the fact it's got a yellow wire only suggests it's going to be only the V not the A so it won't be audio video so that's uh, that's literally everything you get there and then the final thing that we've got to look at we've got a couple of these little uh, safety clips so these are the things that stop the um, the anti-vibration spheres from um, detaching and your gimbal falling out of the sky and then we've actually got the mount now this is quite interesting that the um, unlike something like the Fairtech mounts so I'll just grab an old that's an old version of the Phantom Fairtech mount which is a fairly chunky unit um, this is all you get um, this is the uh, the basis of the Tiny 2 so uh, it's going to be nice and lightweight for that reason so you haven't got a lot and I believe it does go via the compression route um, which means that basically the uh, the anti-vibration spheres will be being squashed by the um, by the weight of the gimbal which usually from my experience actually heralds better results than when it's just hanging down from them so that's everything that you get in the box nice and simple everything you'd expect the fact you get some different anti-vibration spheres is going to be interesting to see what the different weights are it feels just from an initial touch that the red ones are maybe actually a little bit softer than the black ones which is usually not the case but anyway we can uh, double test that so what I'll do now is I'm going to throw it all together um, and then we can take a look at it all completed then I'll throw it onto a multi-rotor um, and we'll get some test footage of it okay so as you can see I've put this all together now um, before I go out into the field what I wanted to do is just um, talk a little bit about the construction now I've just thrown it together um, I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that I believed it was a compression based system um, I am indeed incorrect on that um, you can see basically that the weight of the gimbal under here is actually hanging down from these now if I turn it upside down what you can actually see or indeed at an angle is that this is a rail mount system and in fact there is nothing there is nothing rigid across this this part here so you are literally hanging it from the rails and that's why you need these extra little supports here because basically um, you know if these dampeners did fall out they would go now there's nothing inherently wrong with the setup that they've they've used here um, you know it's, it makes the thing lighter because it doesn't have extra you know GRP uh, elements to it but it does sort of it's kind of counterintuitive when you feel something that's kind of flopping around like that I guess the other thing that's important to know 
though is because of the um the, the mounting system that you've got here mounting it on something like a phantom um or, or anything that's kind of got pre-drilled holes uh, is pretty much not going to be possible without creating your own bracket for it um, which is obviously an option um depth wise this will just about so so this this depth here that's going to really push it on a phantom in terms of um kind of depth before it's touching the ground even with the extended landing legs uh, it's a project i might take a look at obviously i've got a phantom 2 lying around so um, i may uh, take a look at it and uh, see if i can come up with a, um, a bracket of some sort um there's chances are there's already one out there on um things verse or uh, or shapeways anyway but um yeah interesting to see that this is solely a rail mount system based product and the fact that it's uh, kind of floppy on that now in that respect these red dampeners they do feel quite firm I, I was initially feeling that they were quite flimsy but um actually i think they are firmer than i give them credit for but as always with these things the uh, the proof will be very much um in the pudding and the flying um the other thing that was quite interesting is balance wise um, on a Hero 3 camera, which I put on earlier, the gimbal does not balance perfectly at all. Uh, when you put the Hero 4 camera in it, it is almost perfect. In fact, I would go as far as to say that is pretty much perfect. For a Hero 4 camera, that's the Hero 4 Silver I've got attached to it with the battery included in it so interesting that they've got the, uh, the 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 cable that can actually do the charging as well because the idea of that is that you can remove the battery remove a bit of weight um, whereas actually this is balanced it would appear for a hero 4 with camera and battery included rather than without um, however knowing what i know of the evolution motors and knowing that these are identical to it i think removing the battery really wouldn't cause too much of a problem um, in terms of performance but I'm going to leave the battery in um, and then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to my Alien 560 which is my uh, multi-rotor with a rail mount system um, and take it up in the air and we'll take a look at some footage. Okay, so I promise you I will actually get this thing in the air for you in a moment, but before I do so, I just wanted to show you a bit of the wiring as well, because I think it's quite important just to take a look at that. Um, basically, what I've done, I've got it all set up on my uh, rails, on my Alien 560, uh, which is the only quadcopter I have with a rail mount system. Um, as you can see, it's quite deep on the ground. Um, I've had to use these rather ugly looking feet just to uh, get it get it high enough. Um, standard feet on this frame would be fine, but um, it's, it is a consideration that you've got to bear in mind, because this is basically purely rail mountable then you need to make sure that you've got a quadcopter that's got the ground clearance to be able to cover it anyway um, looking at the wiring basically the wiring harness that you get with it you've got your um, your power which I've rigged up to uh, a JST I've had to extend my JST because it was a little bit short for this particular frame but not a problem there it comes with a JST um, connection um, you then have this wiring loom here which is standard servo wires what you've got is you've got a three pin servo wire and then you've got three separate ones now what's really nice about this is that this particular wire here the one with three pins on it is the um, it's the mode switch which is the white cable but you've also then got ground and you've got a 5 volt output now it's important to bear in mind that that is an output so what's happening is the voltage is coming into the gimbal and it's then being transmitted out as 5 volts so what that means is you can actually plug your gimbal in to a receiver without any quadcopter at all and you can actually power it so if you've got a standard receiver you can actually control your tiny 2 gimbal without having a quadcopter anywhere near it which is really you know a nice idea if you wanted to do it um, in another application you know you could do it handheld you could do it um, you know in a car on a boat blah 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 um, there are options there um, you know you, you would be able to control pitch and roll and everything like that through a remote control through through a, um, a standard transmitter um, just by hooking into it obviously for this application however I don't want that 5 volts going into my receiver because my receiver is already getting 5 volts I'm using easy UHF um, via the 4 channel one on this particular one um, obviously applications are going to vary but one thing I wanted to make uh, a note of is that um, because you have got potentially you've got the mode switch you've then got pitch roll and um, your which all can be controlled via your transmitter but that means that potentially you've got four channels that you need to give up to to get full kind of access of it and quite a few transmitters aren't capable of doing that so for example I mean I'm using a 14 SG so that's no problem I've got up to 14 channels available so I can free that up and especially using uh, easy UHF where I can create that as a that even if even the little four channel one is in fact via PPM 12 channels 
we won't get bogged down too much in that but basically what it means is um, I'm going to be setting this one up to only control the pitch so I can control the the, 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 the tilt basically of the uh, of the gimbal um, I want to be able to control the yaw so I can pan it around left and right I'm not too fussed about the roll because I'm going to just keep it stable on the horizon basically so I'm not going to actually attach that one and obviously then the mode which allows me to flip between different modes which is the uh, the mode switch now what i've done i've done some extension cables these are just arduino um uh, jumper cables basically so all i'm going to do is i'm going to put the white to white brown to brown blue to blue And crucially also, I'm putting black to black because, and this is a very important thing, if you do buy one of these, um, you, you have to have, even if you're not using the 5 volts, so I'm not using the red wire, um, but even if you're not using the 5 volts, you still have to have a ground coming from these, these servo wires onto this, otherwise it just doesn't work. Um, I found that out by obviously doing some testing, so just bear that in mind. Anyway, that's all hooked up, so now if I scooch this backwards a little bit, what I'll do is I'll power up the quad. And as you can see, gimbal's kicked into action. I had it on the wrong model there. So, gimbal's now initialized. And you can see at the moment it's tilting all the way up. Now what I've got on my transmitter, I've got a uh, three-mode uh, three switch here, which does these various modes. So you can see if I flip that, it starts rolling around. And if I flip it back, it'll go straight back. So I've got some slider switches on the side. So slider switch on the left controls the pitch so it tilts all the way around and you can see it almost goes backwards and then if I slide it all the way to the top it will come around now movement on that if I want to stop it I have to manually stop it so it's not um, like the fair tech one of the fair tech modes it's not like um, that way you can sort of say right sit, I, I want to put my slider in central position and it will level up um, so it's worth bearing that in mind that you do have to manually in this particular mode you have to manually stop it but it is a very nice smooth glide and obviously you'll see in the flight footage now the other thing that you can do because I've got the um, I, I've actually got the your axis plugged into it as well if I do that with my slider at the moment nothing's happening so what you need to do is you put it into mode 2 which is kind of a locked mode and now if I slide it around you can see the camera is now controlled now there is a 320 degree rotation it says on that but interestingly with the setup that I've got just out of the box like this I would say you're not really getting much more than about a hundred maybe 200 degrees of rotation it won't go all the way around um, it kind of stops halfway so it's kind of pointing sideways now and as you can see if I flip it all the way around it goes a little bit further than sideways, but um, I'll have a play around with that. This is on just the standard firmware that came with it, so um, so that's uh, that's fairly fairly straightforward. But at least it does give you that ability to uh, to control it. And again, the proof will be in the pudding um, in terms of the flight, which I will now finally get to. So finally time to get in the air using my Alien 560. Now I have to admit this quadcopter is not perfectly tuned. Um, there's a bit of oscillation due to the weight that's behind it. It's about two kilograms in weight. I'm using the DJI E310 system with a five, uh, 5,200 milliamp 4S battery. It only does about eight to nine minutes worth of flight. It's a little bit too heavy for the motors, so I really need to upsize. Anyway, looking at the footage, as soon as I had the uh, the screen up and running, I could immediately see that good things were happening here key things to look at when we're talking about uh, gimbals the horizon the horizon is the most crucial part of it and horizon lock is something that fails and flaws most gimbals so the key here is if you look at the left and right hand edges of the horizon that's what we want to keep locked in we want them to stay pretty much exactly where they are and immediately as soon as I took off I could see as long as there wasn't any vibration that, that I couldn't see through my FPV monitor that really really nice things were happening and as you can see from this footage it is locked in and stable now 
I'm going to throw it through a few tests um, over the, uh, the the next few bits of footage, as you'll see. Initially, this is literally just taking off, seeing how it reacted, um, doing a nice slow pan around, seeing how the horizon sticks. And again, some of the things that have really flawed things like the Fayetec G3 Ultra and their more recent um, Mini 3D is number one vibration for the Mini 3D, which was horrendous, and number two horizon lock. And I can immediately see that this is far superior in terms of both of those at the moment. No wobble whatsoever. Um, there's maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, but I am really picky when it comes to these kind of things. Um, and again, I have to admit that the balance of this uh, this particular quadcopter is not perfect. However, this is exactly the same setup as I used for the Mini 3D testing, so it's safe to say this is a very accurate test if you're comparing the two. Instantly, as soon as I saw this footage, I suddenly realised that I'm not actually going to be really comparing this with the uh, the Mini 3D. This is almost a comparison of the um, the DJI Zenmus. Um, I, I was actually quite staggered at how smooth this footage has come out. I guess I've become somewhat pessimistic when I've been looking at gimbals and, and doing a lot of the Fairtech work that they always come out really good, but they never come out perfectly. Now, as you can see here, a bit of distortion, of course, because I'm using the GoPro, but this is doing the tilt. Um, so you can do a nice up and down tilt, which is something that you can't always do on the DJI and you can't always do it on the Fairtech gimbal. Um, you can see the frames wobbling about a bit and the, um, the anti-vibration lock-in pin then just kind of uh, vibrating so proof that there's a bit of wind, a bit of downdraft and I think aerodynamically the Alien 560 is not perfect either. Now what I've done is I've flicked it into mode 2 so what I'm doing is I'm controlling the actual yaw of the gimbal not the quadcopter so the quadcopter is just floating there doing what it does and I am now actually panning this around so again with the Mini 3D from Fairtech very similar to to what they've done and actually for that it was the best mode because that actually stopped a lot of the horizon problems but as you can see here it's absolutely locked in I'd say that the wind is probably five to seven miles an hour so um, fairly average so what I'm now doing is I'm kind of leaving the gimbal in its locked in mode and I'm now yawing the quadcopter so what's happened there is I've now hit the buffer so the gimbal can't go any further past this point so I'm now physically sort of pushing against the gimbal now as you'll see in a moment what I do is I now pan back and it will get to the point where the gimbal was originally and it will stay there and that's basically exactly where it was pointing before because in this mode 2 what you're doing is you're basically putting on a fixed location so now what I'm doing is I'm panning the gimbal around a little bit more and you can see it's a very sort of surreal kind of uh, way of demonstrating this because this this thing is you know 200 feet in the air at the moment hovering um, and you know and you've just got this beautifully locked in horizon um, really really impressed bear in mind also you'll notice that there is a slight tilt left to right on the horizon I would say that I need to roll it maybe two degrees to uh, down to the right um, but e even that said there's no drift there's no wobble again I'm just sort of demonstrating the um, the locked in feeling in the uh, in the mode 2 at the moment um, but it's um, it's it's pretty impressive now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the quadcopter so again I'm only using your inputs for the actual quadcopter not the not the gimbal I'm just pointing the gimbal straight at the sun and I've got it in this mode 2 at the moment and I'm now yawing the quadcopter around the gimbal to see whether or not that will actually glitch it out but it's absolutely nailed in it's it's as good I would say in terms of that as DJI but what you've got to remember is that the DJI Zen Moose which I rave about um, because I do think it is the best in the business that doesn't have the ability of actually controlling the yaw so um, you know having this ability on this and that locked in horizon is a really good thing so you know so far anyway when you're looking at this footage everything is pretty impressive the the um, the pitch is nice and smooth the roll um, I've got them on these slider switches but it's a nice smooth motion and it's um it's the kind of thing that you you know you have to get used to over a time frame so what I now do is I flip this around and you'll see in a moment it jerks and that's me flipping it back into the basically the forward mode where it's just pointing forward 
So now we move on to a fairly quick uh, yaw and roll drift test. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to yaw the quadcopter around and the idea is to see whether or not once you're yawing the horizon has to kind of come back to a level playing afterwards. So you're doing the spin, you're seeing whether or not the horizon is tilting and it has to be said as far as I can see there may be a tiny amount of roll drift on it but absolutely nothing um, compared to what I've been seeing from the uh, the Fairtech products for example so an excellent example of how good that is so now let's move on to a little bit of proper forward flight and uh, and well aerial photography um, as you can see a nice smooth gliding shot going over one of the trees um, fairly early in the morning this was um, this was actually over a couple of days that I filmed these uh, these particular bits but I tried to do it at the same time so you get a kind of a similar feel to it um, but again as you can see nice smooth steady shots the horizon you can see even more there that the horizon is too high up on the left than it is on the right so there definitely is maybe a calibration that I need to do and I have to admit I also noticed that off the bat the uh, the gimbal was actually pointing ever so slightly to the left now what's also interesting which is worth mentioning is that compared to say for example the Zenmoose gimbal um, this doesn't actually start yawing around for quite some time so I tend to be flying FPV through the gimbal um, which is what I do on my, uh, my Zenmoose but what you've got to bear in mind of course is when you're doing that you don't really know where your quadcopter is actually pointing and this because it takes quite a long time to actually respond it's really nice in terms of a nice slow panning shot but if you've only got FPV via your GoPro for example then you can find yourself kind of wandering um, you know especially if you're doing the footage that I've done near trees and things like that you can find yourself actually getting a bit, a bit disorientated and the problem is you then try and overcompensate and that then spins it round and it ruins your shot so just just work bearing that in mind um, and obviously I've got to take a look at some of the software some of the settings again this is the original firmware so it may be that there are some improvements to be had and what's also key is that I know you can calibrate this and this is literally out of the box this is kind of not what you really should do you should update your firmware you should calibrate your gimbal um, I have literally thrown this straight onto a, a quadcopter but that being said you know the footage speaks for itself really um, absolutely fantastic I think and, and you know genuinely a contender to um, you know to compete with the uh, the DJI product um, uh, mounting options obviously uh, things like phantoms are going to miss out on this without a bit of bracketry but you know as you can see from that shot really nice in flight so now let's do a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. Now on the left hand side you have the Z1 Tiny 2 and on the right hand side rather than a Fayotec product which is what I was expecting to be putting this thing up against this is actually footage from my Zoogon V2 Pro using the DJI H3 3D Zenmoose. Um, I really do think that this is the best one to put it up against because frankly as you can see as you're watching the footage while the cameras are slightly different it's the Hero 4 on the left it's the Hero 3 black on the right they're both running 60 frames per second the light is a slightly different different times of day etc but the wind conditions are the same airframes are different but you can just see a nice smooth gliding feel to both of them they're, they're both locked in gimbals um, easily comparable I would say in terms of the quality of footage um, and you've also got the extra features and I think what that leads us on to is really the conclusions about this gimbal so what I'll do is I'll leave the footage um, from the uh, the tiny two playing in the background whilst I just talk about this product. I've been kind of blown away by it to be honest. Um, I'm so used to dealing with um, gimbals that have not necessarily let me down but they, they feel like they're in a pricing point. They, they're they not competing with what I deem to be the best which is the, the DJI Zenmoose as I keep banging on about. Um, I have always put that down to being an issue that the Zenmoose links into the flight controller um, and hence it can use the IMU so it knows what you're going to do. To me, this gimbal um, has kind of proved that that isn't necessarily the case. It's just simply a case of that some of the products I've tested, most of them, granted Fayotec, um, they, they just aren't quite up to scratch with the IMUs that are in something like this gimbal. Um, and, and again, it's something that I've seen on now the, the Evolution, the handheld version, and also the Rider 2, um, that, that Zion really do have a grasp of how to put these things together. Now, 
there are problems there are that, that potentially you know need need noting the mounting is an issue the rail mount system and only having a rail mount system is a bit, a bit of a pain um, because not everyone has a quadcopter with a rail mount system generally speaking if you've got a quadcopter with a rail mount system you're going to have quite a large frame large frames require bigger motors bigger batteries more investment things like that um, I would love for example to be able to say to people who have got a um, you know a Zugong V2 Pro like I do go out get one of these gimbals problem is you're not going to be able to do that without doing some work in regards to the mounting which is you know from a 3d designer point of view something that i will probably try and take on to see if we can give it as an option but out of the box it's not going to work phantom owners likewise phantom 2 owners those products are coming down in price because of the phantom 3 and all of the integrated cameras a gimbal like this is going to be best suited to people who don't want to spend too much money buy a phantom 2 and then put this on there problem is you have to have the rail mount system so uh, it's, it's a minor gripe to be honest because ultimately the most important thing on a gimbal in my opinion is footage and this footage is simply stunning um, you know for, for the price point for what you get um, the fact that you can also you can wire it up with a radio transmitter um, you know without even having a quadcopter so you can control it completely separately if you want to that's fantastic um, all of the various pluggery the wiring options the quality of it let's not forget that this has got some beefy motors on it as well so actually when you compare it to the Zen Moose there the Zen Moose has some downsides um, number one you've got to link it to a NASA um, number two the motors are pretty small and they do glitch out in high wind um, number three you've got to have a CAN bus system so you've got to have a PMU V2 you've got to have a GCU unit you know all of that is built into this so it really is potentially something that, that is is you know putting putting the Zen Moose through its paces now and uh, to be honest we're not going to see any more Zen Moose gimbals for, for heroes I don't think I think nowadays uh, DJI are going the route of just integrating their own cameras fair play to them you get excellent footage for it but for me this is a product that you know really 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 is worth investing if you're going down the route of a hero gimbal and you don't want to be tied to a NASA for me the the, the Zion Z1 is really pound for pound the best option that you you can go for and um, I'm going to enjoy getting this onto a larger frame getting a, uh, a new frame I think for this and uh, really enjoying some of the features on it in the future so um, thanks for watching hope that's been helpful